What's going on everyone? In the text to binary video, we saw how to go from text to character codes and then to binary numerals. In this video, we're going to see how this works behind the scenes using JavaScript. Let's get to it. Understanding how we can go from text to binary is pretty straightforward after we understand how character encoding and positional numeral systems work. If we have text like Deep Lizard, we can look at each character in the string of characters and find a corresponding character code. These days, the character encoding we usually use is Unicode. So 10 characters map to or correspond to these 10 decimal numerals, which are known as character codes. One way to think of Unicode is as a function. We start with an input character and the Unicode function outputs to us a code. More commonly, we would say that Unicode provides us with a map or a mapping from characters to numerals. This is the code that generates these Unicode values, and you can see here that it uses the piece of code that we saw before. I'll link in the description to the video and timestamp where we talked about this piece of code, char code at. The code that takes us from decimal to binary looks like this. We need to first have a number, then we can use this piece of code to string to convert the number to another base. We specify the base that we want to convert to in the parentheses. There are two ways we can specify a number to work with. Let me show you what I mean. Let's take this conversation to the console. Remember, F12 on your keyboard gets you to the JavaScript console. Let me just go ahead and refresh your memory. To go from that first character, D, to the numeral 100, we do it like this. This gives us the 100 for the D. The piece of code charcode at is a function that knows the Unicode mapping, and we are able to take advantage of this fact. Now let's go from this 100 to the binary representation 1100100 using the toString function. Hmm, we get an error here because we can't just type the number. This was also the case for the character D. We had to put the D inside of quotes. This let JavaScript know that the D was a string. Watch how it will fail if we don't put the D inside quotes. All right, so we use quotes for strings, but what do we do for numbers? Well, there are two ways. Let's go with the way the notebook uses down here. We type the word number and put the number we want to work with inside of parentheses. It works now because JavaScript knows what the deal is. This is how JavaScript knows that these characters, the 100, represent a number. So this is how it's done. If some of these code examples freak you out, don't worry. We'll be talking a lot more about code as we get deeper into the playlist. The examples we've seen so far are just to get you some exposure to code sooner rather than later. Let me know in the comments if you're able to get this code to run in the console yourself, and I'll see you in the next one.